And I guess uh, this is the first card we're going to remove from the wallet. So, I mean, I'll leave it in the wallet for now, but once this thing is canceled, that's also going bye-bye. I'm going to uh, get rid of this as well. So that's actually gone. We're getting rid of that card in the wallet. Let's go goodbye. Spring cleaning, I'm sorry. Okay, so lately people have been making fun of me for my wallet, and I really don't know why. I don't understand what's to make fun of. In fact, oh, actually, not this one. This, actually, this is the wallet that people have been making fun of, and I'm still not quite sure why. Kelby and I did a video recently out in the field, and he was telling me that this wallet is absolute trash. Like how thick this thing is. <laughs> This is the wallet that holds my current and active cards. In fact, actually some inactive cards, unfortunately, but we'll talk about it. And I figured 2025 was... 25 was... And I figured 2025 was upon us and we have to do maybe a little bit of spring cleaning, even though it's winter time. So I want to get more organized for 2025. So let's do it together. I'm going to go through every single card in this wallet, what I'm going to get rid of and why, and why I'm keeping certain cards in this wallet for the future. My wallet usually doesn't change, but this time it's pretty drastic. Okay. So starting off first with the first card that a lot of people have been making fun of me for is the Amex Platinum card. Now there's two things wrong with this scenario and why I have the Platinum card on my wallet. Number one is most people are saying, why do you even have a Platinum card on you? You don't need it to spend money on anything. It doesn't earn restaurant, grocery, the, the, nothing that you pay for in day-to-day -day life is needed to hold this Platinum card. That's the first problem. And while I would agree with you, I also would say like, I did use it to get into my Centurion and Delta Sky Club lounges anytime we went there. So I actually like to keep it in the wallet just so I could literally show them the card so they can scan it and get me into the lounges. So that's the reason I keep it on me physically. And I don't have a travel wallet or a non-travel wallet, just an everyday wallet. I just have one wallet for everything. And the second reason that a lot of people hate this is because, well, this card actually is inactive. <laughs> That's right. If you guys were following along, I actually canceled this card a few months ago, maybe a couple months ago, and I've just kept it in my wallet because, well, as we'll soon find out, I don't use enough cards in a daily, weekly, monthly basis to fill up the five card slot in the extra wallet. You know, I only really use a few cards, which we'll get into, but I want to fill up the entire space. And I feel like if I have space, you might as well use it. And so the platinum card quite literally is completely useless in my wallet. And I guess uh, this is the first card we're going to remove from the wallet. Moving on to the next one. That is the BAM. Amex white gold. Unfortunately, I did not actually change this back to the classic gold yet. I'm, I just keep forgetting to do it, but I'm going to do that very soon. But this card is in my wallet, and there's another issue with this. Uh, there's an issue with this card being in my wallet. Number one, it's not classic gold, so that's the issue. The second thing is that I'm actually not using it, and I have completely stopped using it for the last... I would say a couple of months now. And the reason being is that I've been kind of going all in with Chase. I've been getting a lot of Chase points, a lot of Chase business cards, and I've been really loving the Chase currency and ecosystem as it is. And since I was already planning on canceling my Amex Gold card as well come February when the renewal comes up again, so just a couple of months away, I'm already kind of living life as if this does not exist. So every single month, I'm just using the monthly dining credits. I'm using it towards Grubhub, what have you. And then I'm using my Uber Cash. But outside of those two things, I am not swiping this card whatsoever, even though it earns 4X. And you'll see a little bit later, a little a trick that I learned and actually getting pretty close to 4X back on a Chase card at grocery stores, which we know is kind of taboo. So we'll, we'll talk about it. And so I've lived life like this thing does not even exist. And I think it's kind of helped me because I don't even have to think about which currency I want to earn it. It's just all chase right now. And even in some cases built, but for now, this card is going to be canceled in a couple months. I mean, I'll leave it in the wallet for now, but once this thing is canceled, that's also going bye-bye, unfortunately. So now let's get into exactly the huge and big changes because last year, those two cards were a big part of my wallet. And now that those are going away, well, that's over a thousand dollars in annual fees that I have now cut. And I now only need some other cards that actually have very low or no annual fees at that. So the next one on the list, bam, we already know from that look what that looks like. 
and that is the Chase Sapphire Preferred, baby. That's right, the Chase Sapphire Preferred, which, fun fact, I've held this card for a little over three years now. Next November will be my fourth year, and I'm going to reapply for this card and get a new welcome offer on the Sapphire Preferred because you know they have the 48-month cooldown on the welcome offer on this card unless something changes. Now, the reason this is in my wallet and why it's actually like one of the most powerful cards in my wallet today is for a few different reasons. Now, number one, the Sapphire Preferred, a lot of people like to make fun of. It's kind of like the joke card. It's, you know, the one everybody gets, but the one nobody keeps. And really because it just serves one function for most people, and that is being able to take all of your points that you earn, whether it's from Chase Business Cards or your Chase Freedom Unlimiteds and all these different Chase cards, pooling all of your ultimate reward points together into this one card and allowing you to take those points and transfer it out to partners, aka like transferring it to Hyatt, transferring it to different airline partners, which I have yet to do with this specific card. And it has a $95 annual fee with a $50 hotel credit. And I guess I'm a little bit unique in that I actually like that $50 hotel credit because, well, obviously the way you should be using it is like paying for like $150 hotel and now it's discounted by $50. But since I make videos on YouTube, I think it would be really funny to keep this card every single year to use that $50 hotel credit literally on a $50 hotel. Just like I did a few months ago, I stayed at this, you know, Roach Motel. It was, it was scary, kind of like a weird part of town, little weird situation, people staring at you and stuff. And I just thought it'd be funny if I did that every single year. So that's why I'm keeping this in my wallet. Why I think this card actually is pretty powerful in my wallet versus maybe some other people's wallets is that the 3x online grocery category that everybody likes to mock and you can't actually utilize I've actually been able to utilize using a trick that I learned from Chad's Money Minutes in that if you just preload your Chase Sapphire Preferred into, at least in my case, my Publix account. So Publix is a grocery store. It's pretty big in the South. And you add it to your online account to where they allow you to like scan QR codes in person and pay through your online account. Well, that's exactly what you do. You go to Publix, you go to check out physically in person. There's a little QR code that lets you actually check out. It goes through the online app and it codes that purchase even though you purchased in person physically it codes that purchase as an online grocery because it's attached to that online account thus giving you 3x chase ultimate reward points per dollar spent at grocery stores and in my case Publix a lot of people have used this also for Kroger anybody that has a Kroger or any type of Kroger subsidiary uh you could actually do Kroger pay with your Sapphire preferred and that'll code towards the 3x so it's like yeah, I could take the Forex back on the Amex Gold card that I you know, threw behind me, but I'd rather actually just earn the currency that I like the most right now, which is Chase UR, and I'm still getting 3X, so I'm just missing out on 1X, but this card has a $95 annual fee, and the Amex Gold has a 325 annual fee, so that's why I've kind of shifted all of my grocery spend for any time that I go to the grocery to the Sapphire Preferred at this time, and that's why I'm keeping it in my wallet. Next, we have the... Bam! Some of you might be able to tell from this right here, but this is the Built Master Card, baby. We got the Built Master Card here. And the Built Card, it's it's one of those cards that I keep on my wallet. I haven't really found too many uses for this card outside of really some unique use cases because there have been times that I've been able to at least, you know, dine out, you know, go to restaurants on the first of every single month or there have been times where i've actually paid cash for a hotel like i did in new orleans at the waldorf astoria it was like a 300 and maybe a 300 dollars for that night all in cash but i just happened to be checking out september 1st and you guys know what happens the first of every month for built all of the multipliers that this card comes with is actually now double that means dining on the first of the month is not 3x it's actually six points per dollar spent so 6x on every dollar that you spend dining out Travel goes from 2x to 4x, and then basically it's a 2x back on everything catch-all card on the first of every single month. So there's been a lot of times where I've been able to dine out and get 6x back on that entire purchase with the built card. And basically I view my built points almost like my chase points in, in terms of value of the currency. In fact, built might even be a little higher for their transfer partners. And also there was a time in the summer when I've been able to use this, I think once or twice for the built neighborhood market where I was actually able to find certain restaurants that not only gave me like the 3X back on dining, but also an additional like five to 10X back because it was a built neighborhood dining restaurant <laughs> and because it was a part of that program i was able to get added multipliers i remember in charleston i went to this place called pugan's porch and i think we literally got maybe 11x like 8 or 11x i forget 
per dollar spent. I think I ended up getting like 550 bill points for that one dining out transaction. And that's that's pretty huge. And I would have gotten a lot less for without the built card or any other card, but those multipliers. But I know that that's been dampened a little bit and you can't get as high of a value as that as we once did in the summer, but that's what I used it for then. But I think the built card is kind of like a wild card. You can use it sparingly. You can use it randomly whenever the occasion kind of comes up. And I think for that, and since it's a MasterCard and I don't have many MasterCards in my wallet, just to have a little bit of diversity, I'm going to keep it in the wallet for now in case a place doesn't accept these or doesn't accept Amex, which is very unlikely, but still possible, as our friend Calby said. It is a possibility because, like, I've been to some stores where they take MasterCard but not Visa or mm. vice versa. It's really rare, but it does happen. Well, especially Costco, I guess. Yeah. But you don't true. shop at Costco. No. <laughs> And of course, we can't not rep MasterCard World Elite, right? I mean, come on. We can't just not rep that. So built, staying in, baby. All right. Next up is the last one of this top fold, and then we'll go into the meat of the wallet. I guess I should call it the potatoes because like this is supposed to be the meat, but I don't know. Well, we'll see. And the last card is the one that really has revamped my entire setup. The one that I think would shock a lot of people that i'm using like for almost everything and that is the chase inc unlimited card that's right the ink business unlimited this card has literally been used so much <laughs> in these last couple of months after getting them really because i just absolutely value and love the simplicity of it it's 1.5x on everything and i've been using it everywhere where i can't get a normal multiplier on and some of you might be saying like okay you're missing out on 0.5 because there's so many different credit cards out there that offer 2% back flat, also uncapped. Why do you choose to earn 0.5 less, 1.5x on the Ink Unlimited? And again, it's the same answer. It's like, I kind of reminded of what Call Me Lani says, and which is pick your partners. And in my case, I'm almost picking my currency where I really am loving my Chase Ultimate Reward points. I'm really building it up. I have a plan for them where I want to use them abroad in this in 2025, hopefully, God willing. And I really want to keep earning chase points because that's the currency in which I found out is going to get me there. And that's why I really love this card because it's no annual fee, 1.5% back on everything, all chase points all the time. And some of you may know, like I use the Sapphire Preferred, sure, for my grocery spend, but I actually don't really go to the grocery stores as often as I once did. And now a lot of most of my spend is now going towards the butcher shop. I mean, we're spending maybe a few hundred dollars every single month at the local butcher where we're buying, you know, steaks, you know, sirloins. We're getting uh, burgers from there. They're all local. We're getting eggs, our milk, uh, cheese, basically all dairy products and all meat products are all being bought by my local butcher. And the butcher, unfortunately, does not code towards anything at all it's like a, it's called like a meat provision or meat lock or something like that i don't know any cards that earn percent back on that but at least i know i can earn 1.5 percent on everything with the ink unlimited and that's where i use this card on all of that and it does build up over time i've never been a huge multiplier guy but this uh this is definitely staying on my wallet for the long haul at least for now i would say Okay, so so far we have kept three cards, and that's the Built, Sapphire Preferred, and Ink Unlimited. So those are the three cards that are definitely staying in my wallet today. And now let's go through the middle part of this wallet. And we'll go through it a little bit quicker. And because this, uh, some people might say, is unacceptable. Some people might say that this is not okay and I need to clean this out. And I hear you. I hear you. So let's... I'm going to clean it out today. Okay, let's do it. So first and foremost, we have what I like to keep around, which is my... Uh, wisdom in my pocket you know you call a little bit of a daily wisdom in my fortune cookies and ones that i think have a good message i will keep in my wallet uh just to, just to have it i don't know i, I just kind of like to keep it with me almost as a safeguard in a little bit of a ways so let's see let's see some of the wisdom that was shared i got four in here i thought i had five i might have lost one <laughs> so let's see what we got so the first fortune cookie is everyone is fun you just have to find their fun side that's right. So I like this message because, well, it allows us to not be as serious. I think this allows people to get out of their ego a little bit and allow you to think like, okay, even if this person has done something wrong to me, I could still find some light in all of that darkness. So definitely, I agree with this message. Absolutely. I think everyone is fun and give a little bit of grace every now and again to the, to the people out there. Here's one that kind of works in real time. Look at this, it's so close you can't even read it, right? But the farther that we go back, 
the farther forward you are likely to see. Ah, you like that? Ah, look at that. You just back up a little bit, and now you can see a little bit farther. And the last one, which is the most important, and that is a lifetime of successful ventures is yours to create, of course. Mr. Venture has some ventures, hopefully, you know, knock on wood. Okay, so that's the last of my silly fortune cookies. Next is the money here. And you can see we got some, an unfamiliar face, that being a $2 bill. For those of you who are unaware, you could just go to your local bank and ask them for $2 bills. And sometimes they'll have them on hand, sometimes they won't. Sometimes you have to order them and they'll give you in like $50 to $100 stacks. But you can go and still get $2 bills from the bank. Who knows how long this will last, if not forever. But for now, I like to keep $2 in my pocket because as well you never know when they're going to come in handy for a tip and i've always said this in the past i still say it and uh calby in fact has started doing this where he's been getting two dollar bills in fact even when we were hanging out in pigeon forge he literally tipped our bartender with two dollar bills and the guy was like wow i haven't seen this in forever and it's really not that much money so it's like it's still a kind of a low tip depending on how expensive the drink is but people are always ecstatic and happy to see it so it's kind of a win-win a little bit you know some people are lucky to have two dollar bills right but no Nobody really knows you can just go to the bank and get them yourself so and if you college football fans clemson does their own paw uh, for college football on their $2 bills and they hand them out during the games, apparently. So for the fortune cookies and the $2 bills, I'm not getting rid of them. They are staying in my wallet for the long haul. But next is something that I'm going to have to get rid of very soon. And it's this unfamiliar Visa debit card. You might be wondering what this is. But this is a debit card I actually got at FinCon, which is a financial convention where we were hanging out with the likes of Calbi and G, Lalit, Asebi, Daniel Braun, a bunch of familiar faces and everybody who's in the finance space kind of was there. And there's a million companies that have these you know setups and everything and they really want you know creators to sponsor their stuff or just to create awareness for their new items so like clean spark was there that bitcoin mining company blackrock was there and this company which specialized in annuities which i wasn't too familiar with at the time but he said hey for talking to me here's a ten dollar debit card so i still need to use that and uh I, i've yet to activate it but it's ten dollars and i gotta use it okay next we got something that's pretty familiar here you guys know what that is the capital one venture x that's right and i know some people may have not seen in the past videos and they're wondering how the heck do you have a venture x i thought you were even denied for this typical venture card and the answer to that is well i was <laughs> and 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 you're right but uh I always like to mention that it's good to have friends in high places. And in this case, that's Calby and G because I am one of his four free authorized users on the VentureX card. And you might be wondering why this is in my wallet because, well, he locked the card on me, which means I can no longer use this card because he doesn't trust me. No, I don't trust him. <laughs> and even if he did unlock the card and I used this and I swiped everything, yeah, I'd be getting 2X miles and everything, but it'll all be going towards his pocket, his wallet, and I'm not okay with that, okay? He's, he's, doing, he's doing well enough with his 50 plus credit cards, all right? But anyway, Way, the main reason I keep this in my wallet is because I know eventually there will be a time where I end up in IAD or DFW, you know, these airports that have Capital One lounges. And just by me being an authorized user on Calby's cards, I actually can bring me and the guests. So me and my wife can go in completely for free to the Capital One lounges. So essentially I've been able to coerce Calby. I mean, uh, be friends with Calby enough to where he's been able to add me as authorized user to have a $0 pass <laughs> a zero dollar to me pass to get into lounge is completely for free so i think that's awesome but yeah i heard you have to have the card physically on you to get in so i'm not going to be the person who's caught without it so it's always in the wallet for that reason and it's not leaving my wallet for that reason next we have something that uh also is a is kind of a a sour a sour spot in my my world here uh, i hate this i hate to mention it but my lion card yeah, yeah, the Lion card's great. It's it's fantastic. And for those of you who are unaware what the Lion card is, essentially a company that will convert any card that you have in your wallet into like this metal card <laughs> in any design that you want. This is a custom design I made. This Chinese character is on here. It says Ziyo and Ji Hui, which is freedom and opportunity in Chinese. And also, I have this uh, Yin Yang with the, the spinning fish, which is actually from my favorite TV show, Avatar The Last Airbender. And I feel like that show literally has changed my entire life, including some great stuff like quite literally opening up all of your chakras, which sounds a little weird, sounds a little woo-woo, but hey, man. Open up your chakras every now and again. I think you'll be surprised at what you might find. <laughs> but uh, but seriously, the Lion card you could see has a chip right here. And this is the chip of my original Amex Gold card. So this was my Amex Gold card for 
you know, over a couple of years, I would say a year or so. And since I have changed the design to the white gold, you know, to make all those videos, what happens when you change the design on your card? Well, they issue you a whole new card with a whole new number, meaning this card is completely useless. That's right. This is now literally just a useless piece of metal, unfortunately, but it's going to stay in my wallet because I love showing this and there's always a time where I'm able to bring it out. Again, it's it's vanity. It's it's a conversation starter. It's fun to drop it on the table. Everybody loves to see it and feel it. Uh, so I just think it's fun to keep around just for the heck of it. But I also agree that when you hand this to the waiter and say like, yeah, yeah, this is I'm going to pay with this. And they say, sir, your card is declined. That also feels bad, too. You know, so it, you know, hopefully you don't use it for that reason. <laughs> But for those reasons, uh, the, I'm out. No, for those reasons, that card's staying in the wallet as well. Next, we have another somewhat familiar face, and that is a Tesla card, baby, a Tesla card. That's right. You get 20X back on supercharging. No, I'm kidding. Uh, this card actually gets you uh, access to my Tesla vehicle. That's right. My, my home office is what I used to call it. And essentially, normally, the key is your phone. You just get onto the app and it allows you to unlock the car. But this key card is in case for some reason my phone dies and I have no access, I could still tap this on the side of the car and this will allow me to get into the car completely. So have to keep this around in those fail safe scenarios. Next is one that gave me a lot of grief as well, Calby especially, was the priority pass card. And you might be saying like, okay, that's cool. Like if you have to get into Priority Pass lounges out and about, uh, at least you want to have the card in on you just in case of any fit, you know, any things that go wrong with your phone or what have you. And I've always been told it's good to keep it in your wallet, which would make sense. The only issue is this is my original Priority Pass card for my original vanilla platinum card where you can get this just by paying that $6.95 annual fee on your platinum card. But that vanilla platinum has been canceled for over a year now, and my most recent platinum card, my Charles Schwab, has also been canceled. So this card is doubly useless, and there's no reason for this to be in my wallet, so I'm going to uh, get rid of this as well. So that's actually gone. We're getting rid of that card in the wallet. Now, the last credit card in my wallet is uh, a fan favorite. A lot of people love it, and it's oddly one of the most powerful cards in most people's wallets, and that is the... <laughs> Thank you. The Kohl's card is one of the most powerful cards in my wallet. You'd be surprised at how much value you can get from this over time. And I'm being a little facetious, but it's actually true. Now, the Kohl's card I really love because a lot of the times when you're actually going to Kohl's, uh, you know, for some reason, I just find that every few months you just find yourself you know roaming or perusing Kohl's I find they have the best music selection and uh, they have a really good uh, clothing selection as well unfortunately they don't sell these shirts there but sometimes they sell some really good shirts and they sell some hiking boots which is all I wear anyway and the only way in some cases to get those 30 to 50 percent discounts that they run every now and again is by having the physical Kohl's card you have to have the Kohl's card you swipe it and you can get that discount some of the time they will have in-store deals so you can just you don't have to actually have the physical card it could just be in store and that's all you have to do but some of the times you need the Kohl's card for that added value so for that reason that's why i really love keeping this around it has quite literally saved me like maybe not a thousand dollars but maybe like five hundred dollars in, in actual value over the last six or seven years that i've had the card i will say they have updated their online portal i used to trash it years ago on youtube but hey uh they have updated their online portal it's now a little bit easier to pay your bills so uh that's staying in the wallet for the foreseeable future because well you, know, you never know. So next we have in this little space here is my Food Lion MVP card. So essentially just if you go to Food Lion, you have you, you scan your MVP card, you can get a lot of discounts. And Food Lion very often has a lot of discounts on their food. But since we basically transitioned to all butcher shop and then some groceries, we just found that some of the groceries that we like and some of the brands that we like happen to be at Publix. And Publix every now and again has like buy one, get one free deals on stuff that we buy. So Publix is now just kind of all in Publix. And then the Sapphire preferred for 3x online groceries. So Food Lion, I haven't been there in many, many months. So this has to go goodbye. Spring cleaning. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. It's got to go. So next is the triple A card here. Essentially, I get three 100 mile toes every single year with this card. And I keep it in the wallet because when they come, they verify that the card is on your person. They actually look at it to make sure that you're the person that has the membership. They're a little bit coveted with their toes and who they send out. So you actually have to have the physical card on you, which is good to know because if you're somebody who's calling a toe for somebody else, which I have done in the past, 
they actually want you to stay with them so you can show the physical card and then they actually can get the tow and use it under your account. So if you have the card, physically keep it with you because they require it in when they actually tow you, at least in New York when I had to use it. South Carolina driver's license. Look at that mug right there. Not too bad. South Carolina. We're now resident here. We moved from New York. A couple of the main issues here is I have a South Carolina State Farm car insurance and I have an Emblem Health uh, health insurance cards in here, which have been expired for a couple of years now. There's literally no reason I keep it in the wallet. So yeah, these are these are gone too. I'm just going to throw them here in case I leak any information. Those two are now gone. And lastly, but not least, my Chase debit card. And this I have to keep in the wallet because there is times, you know, especially when I'm going to get those $2 bills, I got to go there, I swipe my, my Chase debit card, put in my PIN, and then I, uh, you know, can get my $2 bills from Chase Bank, which is where I get my $2 bills. So every now and again, you need a debit card. And uh, that's why I have this in my wallet today. So now let's reconvene the wallet with all of the updated changes to see how thin it actually has gotten. Okay, not too bad. Much, much thinner. It's not really protruding as much as it once did. And now my updated cards right here are all in the main flap here. So not too bad. Definitely not too bad. And just because I always forget to mention it, if you guys are looking to get some extra wallets, uh, we're going to be doing some more giveaways on the channel and live streams very soon. But if you want to get your own before we do any giveaways, or if you never win giveaways, <laughs> I think there's like a 30 to 50% discount right now on extra using my link down in the pinned comment below or in the description. So if you want to pick it up, I still love the wallets. I've had them for the last six years. And uh, I literally like never <laughs> shout them out. I don't know why. But uh, yeah, thank you guys for spring cleaning with me today. And let me know which cards are going to be leaving your wallet uh, this season. And uh, if you agree with any of my decisions below and what cards I should add to my wallet. So and if you want to see exactly why I also love the Ink Unlimited, you can check out this video in the top corner of your screen. So I hope to see you there. Hope you get value from it. As always, thank you guys for being here all the way to the end. I appreciate every single one of you. Thank you so much. Appreciate you.